Hello and welcome to the San Jose State Football Weekly Press Conference. San Jose State coming off of their first loss of the season, 34-13 to against Stanford last Saturday. Uh, this week, San Jose State enters their first bye week of the season, and they will play their next game at Minnesota on September 21st. That game has just been announced as its start time of 11 o'clock Central, 9 o'clock a.m. Pacific time, and it will also be televised on ESPN, either ESPN or ESPN2. Since it is a bye week, there will be no coaches show on KLIV this week or Spartan Football Weekly on the television side as well. Right now, I'll bring in the head coach, Ron Carriger. Thank you, Justin, uh, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, upon further reflection, uh, watching the game film, I, I really feel consistent with what I had said following the game. Um, I thought we, we played some good football uh, at times. Uh, uh, it wasn't good enough. Um, they're a very good football team, as we knew, as advertised uh, going into the game, and uh, a very solid team, uh, a well-oiled machine that's running, on, clicking on all cylinders. They've had their system in place. They've recruited personnel to fit that system, uh, staff's st stability over the last few years. So good program, and we knew that going in. Uh, but all in all, I think we, we did play some good football. Uh, it wasn't flawless, uh, wasn't what we wanted. I went into that uh, knowing, believing we could win that football game, and that's what I wanted to do. Uh, but uh, you know, our goal was to slay the giant, and they are a big, physical, strong team, and that's our approach to it. And, and it didn't happen this time. Um, but uh, I know that we go back to the drawing board, and I've been a part of championship seasons where you've had some, some tough losses early on in the season, and the key is that you learn from those situations. Uh, you learn from mistakes that were made, and you build upon it. Uh, as I go back to the team, we talked about the 2013 season during fall camp. It's of utmost importance that our program continues to get better week in and week out, continue to improve uh, as the weeks go on uh, so that you're playing your best football mid to late season uh, when it, it's, you're in conference play and it, it matters most. Um, but with that being said, I, I, I thought we played good. I thought we, you know, their dominant run game, I thought our guys up front played pretty well in the trenches on the defensive line. I thought um, that uh, for the most part, uh, there was some pressure on the quarterback, um, but our guys, David wasn't on the ground. As you've seen uh, opposing quarterbacks playing against Stanford's defense get picked up 15 or so times during a game, David wasn't. He had a few moments and Sometimes they just get you. Uh, that's just part of the course of the game of football. But I, I thought our, our guys fought a, a valiant fight. Um, they, uh, they did some things. And uh, we had some chances and uh, you know, didn't, didn't fully take advantage of that. Um, I just want to say you know, the, the, this pass protection involves a lot of people. It's more than just your, your five offensive linemen. It involves the running backs. It involves your tight ends. It involves receivers running routes in a timely manner. And it involves the quarterback getting rid of the, uh, the football in a timely manner as well. So there's a lot of variables at play in, in pass protection. And uh, I thought for the most part, other than a few plays, we did a pretty good job there. Um, defensively, um, like I said, toe to toe, we battled, we competed. Special teams, um, for the most part, were pretty solid. Uh, all in all, it was uh, a learning experience. Um, there was some good football played, um, but wasn't good enough, and some areas to improve. Uh, one of my favorite sayings I've used before, but contrast brings clarity. And sometimes you go through you know, tough times, and you learn from it. And if you don't learn from it, history repeats itself and can happen over and over. And it, just like in history, uh, it happens on the football field as well. So I think our, our team is willing, our team is wanting, our team is focused, our team is mature enough to be able to take this game, learn from it, uh, but yet um, build on it. I'm, I'm very encouraged coming out of that football game against Stanford. Uh, very encouraged, I thought, 
you know, we, we, we threw the ball, we, we did some things good, and we were close on some other big plays. So, um, you know, that's uh, really the, the, the next step going forward. This is a, a bye week as we enter, and I think our, our focus, and I, I said this after the game, it's not about the opponent, it's about us. It's about us focusing on what we can do to improve, us taking care of business, um, honing in on the fundamentals, homing in on assignments, uh, schemes, and uh, in improving those areas. So I, I foresee us having four really good practices this week uh, as we enter into a, a Saturday that we're off and then uh, really hone in next week uh, as we get ready for the Minnesota Golden Gophers on the road. Um, and I'll get into them more next week, a week from today, but just, just in a nutshell, another big physical team that uh, had a successful 2012 season, went to a bowl game, and uh, we know uh, that it'll be uh, physical up front in the trenches, but w one that we're very much looking forward to. With that, I'll open it up to some questions. You had uh, 22 first downs on nine, but really more like eight possessions, and include the one at the end of the half. Um, you didn't get the touchdowns that you want, but in some ways, do you feel a little bit more encouraged with the offense after this game than maybe even after Sac State? I was, Jimmy. I think we improved. I, I do, and the 22 first downs were reflective of that. We did move the ball, and as you mentioned, a couple times we came off the field with field goals instead of touchdowns, and the touchdowns, boy, that, that would have really just we would have been hanging in there with them had we, had we came off with touchdowns. But nevertheless, we got some points. We did move the ball. We did have some long drives, I think a 13-play drive, uh, double-digit drives, which was very encouraging. Uh, it's, it, it, unfortunately, we weren't able to capitalize. And I, I thought, you know, on that note, even, even the, the t challenging first half, I thought in early in the fourth quarter when, when uh, we got a turnover on defense and we had the football and we crossed over the 50 and it's a, it's a 27 to 13 game. Uh, in my mind, I felt like we got them right where we want them. We, we go down and score here. It's a seven point game. They're on their heels. And uh, I, I thought we could have had a big momentum swing. Unfortunately, it didn't turn out that way. And, and uh, uh, we will never know what happened. But uh, I was encouraged uh, in only nine drives, 22 first downs. Usually when you have over 20 first downs, you, you, you win a football game oftentimes. And, and, uh, and we didn't. And, and, and that goes to, that's a, a credit to both sides of the ball because the defense, uh, the defense, um, did a did a did a, a, a solid job even though they moved the ball but offensively uh, we had some time consuming drives as well to match theirs and so gave them the ball less with our multiple first downs and and drives and whatnot um so yeah there was a lot more trickery and, and short routes and more complex offense against stanford than there was against uh sacramento state is that a sign of things to come for the year well, I, we like to do a lot of very variable formations and 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 uh, use our personnel differently and and I think uh, I think we just like to put our guys in successful positions to succeed and make plays and and uh, you saw a young man Tim Crawley come out the other night uh, that uh, he's a redshirt freshman in our program uh, you saw some different guys uh, make some plays so. Uh, every every week is really differently. The nice thing is we have it in our holster um, opportunities and the personnel and the formations and shifts and motions to to run different types of offenses depending on the weaknesses that we see in in the opposition. Cool. And um, yeah, Billy Freeman had a, a spectacular catch in the game. Uh, do you guys have plans to use him more this season? Billy's really coming along uh, at the tight end position. Coach Malley's done a Great job there, coaching him and the other tight ends. Uh, so it was a position that we lost two seniors last year who were uh, serious contributors to the offense here. And so Billy's done a nice job coming along. He's got good hands. He's, he's coming along well in the run game. And uh, having multiple tight ends really gives you options uh, as, an offensive, uh, as an offensive unit. Was the idea of throwing the, the short passes, was that – the game plan coming in because you know what they do, or was that more reactive to how they were how playing you early on? More on the reactive side, we had some uh, shots that we called, and uh, they were covered. And again, just 
making good decisions at the quarterback position. Don't force a throw if it's not there. They did a good job defending it. Um, there was one play that we had a receiver wide open down their sideline early in the first half that would have been a game changer. But again, they, they did a good job um, with their games up front and got pressure uh, on our quarterback. And it just came at an inopportune time for us because I think that was right on the right on the cusp of David seeing it and stepping in and making the throw and 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 with an accurate throw which he makes I'm convinced that's a 70 yard touchdown and we're right now in, in the hunt with them and and unfortunately it, it 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 didn't turn out that way so we had we had some down the field plays called but again I think good quarterback play is take what they give you take what they give you I'm just as happy with a, a 14 play drive as I am an 80 yard touchdown pass if both result in, in scoring points. And Alvin Jelks hasn't, hasn't worked himself into the, in the rotation yet. Is that a matter of him just not quite being there or, or do you see him eventually earning a role here? I see Alvin uh, continuing to grow and develop in, in, at the running back position. Uh, Osiris Burke has come along and, and done a nice job. He's a freshman. Uh, Jason Simpson has really just played uh, a, a solid, very, very good at that position uh, when, when, uh, when and Tyler went down that first week. Uh, and then Jared Lawson has played well as well. So um, Osiris, being new to the program, is continuing to learn and understand the you know, when you play uh, running back, there's so much more than just uh, running the football. You need to understand um, pass protection schemes and, and complementary routes in passing game. And I'm confident that Alvin Jelks will, will come along uh, because he's a, a, a young man who's determined. Uh, he's got a great mindset, and uh, he'll be a, a good contributor to this program. Uh, Minnesota, just like Stanford, is you know, a great running team. Uh, how do you guys plan on uh, stopping the run? Well, I, I, I like what we did up front where we went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, battled and competed with Stanford, and they brought in their jumbo personnel, six, seven, eight linemen at a time. Uh, I think uh, – I don't think that's where the game really – the the gap occurred up front in the run game. They wanted to maul us basically in the run game. I think some of the some of the the, the big plays for Stanford, if you look, were on some some of the the play action passes, and the, that's where their chunks came. Um, but I feel good. Our guys up front, they they know the importance of of, of stopping or minimizing the run game, and uh, we'll have a, a a good week of of continuing to get better this week and then really hone in on the Golden Gophers uh, beginning this weekend. And then um, Keith Smith is second nationally in tackles. Can you talk about uh, his presence on, in the defense? Yeah, Keith is a guy I, I see just, uh, you talk about baptized in fire four years ago, thrown in, playing at, Al at Alabama as a true freshman, playing at Wisconsin. Those were were uh, some, some tough road games for a true freshman. I believe he was starting in those games. And and his uh, experience at the position has paid off over the last few years. And he's a leader. He was selected by his teammates as a captain. He's very athletic, uh, runs well. Uh, all those things uh, that you want from a linebacker. He's physical. And uh, he's just in a, a leader of our football team and uh, really encouraged after two games of seeing uh, the level of play that Keith's playing at. When you look at the big picture, um, you know, Stanford, a top five team, and and you saw what happened with, you know, with this team last year after losing those guys. Is that is it easy to kind of see tell these guys, and is it easy for them to understand that this one loss, even though they would have liked it to, to been a little closer, um, it, it's it's not going to ruin this season. Yes, and and my comments to the team, and although this is a tough pill to swallow, we we came into this wanting to win this football game. And with the intent to win this football game, as, as tough as it is and our desired outcome did not come about, I told them this is not a defining moment uh, for this football team. This is not a defining game. The important thing is to learn from the, the, the lessons learned, that uh, as we go back and watch the film and, and coach our guys up, the, just the little things uh, that, that we need to hone in on. So. In a way, it could be a blessing in disguise. Um, I have an attitude, uh, and our locker room, our team has an attitude of embracing challenges. And I wanted Stanford 
Cardinal to be at their best Saturday night because that's going to make us a better football team. Uh, I don't want a team showing up and tripping and stumbling because that's a false sense of security. Even if you win the football game, I want to play against the best, and that was a good team, and they played very well, and uh, they executed for the most part. Uh, I'm sure they had their, their share of mistakes too as they reviewed the film, but um, iron sharpens iron. And that's our motto, that's our program. We want to embrace challenges. Uh, you know, we, we don't take a second seat to anyone. We can compete with everyone, but we also know that that's how you get better. Sometimes there are some growing pains that you have to go through. Maybe to reach your, your big goal, you go through, through some growing pains in the process. And how do you look at having a bye week this early? I know you have another one next month, mm -hmm. but uh, um, yeah, is is there some benefits to getting two games in and then already getting a, a week to kind of just refresh your minds and review things, or is this almost too early for a bye week? No, we'll uh, we'll take it and and work with it. I think uh, the the theme week of this bye week is get better. This is a get better week. I, I told the the players the the term bye. There's a sense of sigh. We have a week off. Uh, that's just the. The, the, the phenomena that comes with buy. And I said, that's not, our, that's not the case. I, I need this football team to approach this week as an opportunity, opportunity to get better, to improve, to hone in on the fundamentals, uh, and to get after it, and to stay well conditioned. Uh, to, uh, with uh, our, we, we say it, our ones versus ones, going after each other, uh, to continuing to, to improve as a program. And so I need them to embrace that, uh, that approach. Uh, a good week of weights, uh, of conditioning, all those things. And then this s weekend, we don't practice Saturday, but Sunday we'll come out and play. I have a, a Sunday practice at a high tempo because the one thing you can lose in bye weeks is that game speed. Uh, if you go two weeks without actually playing a game or that game speed, and I, I found it beneficial to have at, as close to that Saturday or Sunday, if you round it off, but a, an up-tempo, high practice at game speed uh, where your guys are playing at that level so they don't have such a wide gap between uh, two weeks from the previous game. So we'll take it. It's, it's, we're, a, we're a very healthy football team right now. And some people take a bye is kind of go back and heal up and treatment. And that's not our approach. We're, we're going to go out and we're going to hit it, uh, hit the ground running tomorrow and improve as a football team. Um, SJSU fans came out in full force uh, on uh, Saturday. How important is it to get the fans behind you this season? Very important. And I want to thank them for showing up just like I did the first game. Great turnout, Spartan Stadium. I heard our fans in Stanford Stadium much appreciated their support, and uh, we need to just continue that Spartan spirit. We hear them, we feel their energy, and it's an it's important part of, uh, of our football program. So I appreciate that and look forward to their continued support. And uh, lastly, uh, Austin Lopez is basically automatic as a kicker. Um, what does it mean to the offense to have such a you know, great kicker on the team? Oh, he's been solid, and, and uh, you know, let's talk Ryan DeSelvo as well uh, as the, the long snapper, putting the ball on the money. Um, he's just firing it back there. It, it's so important um, from an operation standpoint to, to have consistency and for those guys to be able to uh, be that. And I, f I feel good after the first couple games. Uh, our kicking game has been solid, and it's nice to have that in our hip pocket. We don't always want to settle for it, and sometimes, you know, at the end of the game the other night, I, I knew we could have got a field goal, but that didn't help us, and I'm not into just points just to look a little bit better. I, I wanted to go for – I'm always going for the win, and, and I wanted to try and score a touchdown, um, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's important to have that element of the game uh, very sound. Thank you very much. That concludes this week's press conference. Again, San Jose State will take on Minnesota on September 21st, game time, 11 o'clock a.m. Central Time, 9 a.m. Pacific on ESPN or ESPN2. Check back at sjsuspartans.com for more information. Thanks for watching.